Aye, thanks very much. Uh, and thank you very much, class, for inviting us over today. Last period of Friday, fantastic, 45, 50 minutes, home time, and the weekend beckons. I'm very pleased to be back in, in Matros Academy. We were in Webster's High School yesterday, and Akiva was in Forth Academy. He's been in Forth Academy all week. Akiva is an artist educator, which is someone who uses the artwork which he does to try to educate people. And Akiva has been visiting Scotland now for over 25 years. He's worked in Aberdeen University, he's worked in schools in Glasgow, he's worked in schools in Angus, he's worked in schools in Aberdeen and Fife, and he's worked with young people from primary six right through to secondary six. What Akiva does is try to explain something that is almost impossible to explain. And the way he does that is through the artwork, which for the past 25 years has been a consuming passion. I'm old enough to remember the Second World War because I was only seven. Well, I, it was seven years after the Second World War I was born. And when I was younger, we played a lot of soldiers. And it wasn't on Playstations or anything. We just went out with the wee guns that we got in the shops. And, you know, I was the Germans. My pal was the British and we played at war. But it was quite recent history. Yet, when I was your age, I was appalled to find out an awful lot of what had happened in Europe, which I knew very little about. And one of the worst blots in the whole of human history was the period from 1936 through until about 1945, when an organisation in Nazi Germany created an industry to murder people. I always, when I'm talking about this in fourth or say that if you can imagine starting Montrose Throws Academy in first year, two years ago, and ending up in sixth year, three years from now, in that space of your lifetime in school, no one is living in Scotland. Because in the space of five years, six million people have been killed. In Nazi Germany, not counting soldiers, but there were roughly nine million people exterminated in a lot of ways which are just impossible for us to get our head around. As a very famous politician once said, in fact it was a German Nazi officer, the death of one million people is a statistic. The death of one person is a tragedy. I'm not going to say very much more just now. This is quite a challenging talk for you because it's delivered to people in universities as well as in schools. And Akiva will be more than happy to answer any questions you have. But the one thing that Akiva is determined to do is to make us realize that as human beings, what we're about to listen to isn't something that happened 70 years ago. It's something that's happening just now, and it's something that has happened since 1945 too often. And one of the messages that Akiva tries to put across is as human beings, we can make decisions to involve ourselves in being bad to each other. We do it in the playground. You have a fight with somebody, that kind of violence comes out. What we're looking at here is the systematic business of trying to wipe a whole race of people off the face of the earth and it wasn't monsters who did that, it was human beings. So one of the messages hopefully that I give his story will put across to you today is let's try to make sure that we prevent this kind of violence from happening again and we've got one thing we can do to prevent it. What do you think the, the one thing that all of us have got, almost all of us have got, that can help us stop evil things happening? Anybody? I'm using it just now. Voice. Voice, yeah. We can speak out. Unfortunately, in Nazi Germany, not enough people spoke out. In Rwanda, in Africa, not enough people spoke out. In Syria, at the moment, not enough people are speaking out. So I'll pass over to Akiva because he's the guy that's going to be doing the talk with us today and I hope that you find it interesting and that there will be some questions that you have. But again, thanks very much for giving us your time this afternoon. Okay? Thanks.
I should mention also, uh, so I was born um, two years older than Mr. Lynch. I was born in 1950, five years after World War II ended. It's happened with uh, some uh, pupils and one reporter a few years ago near Glasgow. The people think I'm a Holocaust survivor. I think the white beard fools them. It only turned white over the last 10 years or so. So I'm 62 years old. It was my parents' generation that fought or were in or were victims of World War II. Um, Elie Wiesel, looking at the screen here, the world's most famous living Holocaust survivor. Um, photographed by an American, what we call photojournalist in the States, who covered World War II in Europe, Margaret Bork White, photographed the liberation of one of these camps in Germany. I forget it was Buchenwald or Bergen Belsen. Elie Wiesel is right there on this barracks. All of these guys are like starved to near death. When the British-American uh, uh, troops were coming in uh, from the west, Russian from the east, liberating camps, many of the prisoners, inmates, died. They were just so too weak. This is Elie Wiesel a few years later, probably around the time I was born, late 1940s, early 1950s, in Paris, where he lived for about 10 years after World War II, until he moved to New York in the mid-1950s, when he wrote his most famous book called Night, which may get read uh, in school. It's been very popular uh, in the States in recent years. Uh, what he wrote here is uh, a terrific statement. A lot of people probably express belief for it, uh, but when it comes to practical application, it goes out the window, or else we wouldn't have all these conflicts going on worldwide. Um, even when you have people of the same religion, but different branches of it, murdering each other and civilians. Northern Ireland, Protestants and Catholics killing each other, thousands of victims for years. Thankfully, that's one of the few wars in the, war, in the world which has uh, ended. Next image, please. 